Season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds is going to be incredible. During Star Trek Day in September, we received our first taste of the second season of the series. And you better believe it's the most thrilled we've ever been. On the other side, Henry Alonzo Myers said something that confused us, to say the very least. And today we're providing you with an explanation. First off, why is this season being treated like it's the last? We've learned that Carol Kane will replace the crew member who tragically left the ship in that position as the engine going forward. In addition to more James T. Kirk and a crossover with Star Trek Lower Decks, Trek Movies spoke with showrunner Henry Alonzo Myers at the occasion to see what viewers may anticipate from the future season. According to Myers, they wanted to build on what was successful in the first season and approach this one as though it would be their last. There wasn't enough time for fan feedback to be considered because Star Trek Strange New Worlds started filming its second season before the original one aired. Myers, however, appears confident that they understood what was effective. He said that they're making sure that everything they do this time is bigger and crazier than what they've already tried. They've tried comedy and drama in ways that some episodes will make us laugh till we get a stomachache, and some will punch us in the gut and make us cry. The majority of the USS Enterprise crew should return for season two of the series. There'll undoubtedly be some new faces, including some familiar ones that you might have seen in other shows. A young James T. Kirk will be played by Paul Wesley. Although a release date hasn't been set, it's anticipated to make its debut in 2023. We can't explain in words how excited we are for the new season. Secondly, we have the benefits of episodic storytelling. The creators of the most recent Trek series are learning to not take their place in the Trek universe for granted. Henry Alonzo Myers, the show's creator, made this statement in a recent interview with Trek Movie. He may be acting sensibly by not trying to plan past the second season of the show. It should be noted that Strange New Worlds is presented as a collection of standalone, hour-long episodes instead of a collection of lengthy, season-long story arcs. The show has been able to capture the true essence of Star Trek, which always worked best as a collection of mini-morality plays. This is thanks to the use of traditional episodic storytelling. As a result, this new show is less constrained by long-term storyline goals and is better positioned to explore the ideas of the showrunners. The July 7th finale of the first season of Strange New Worlds went smooth Myers declared that he'd like to carry on the custom, even if both Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard have their supporters. Sticking so tightly to longer story arcs might be to neither show's disadvantage. As a result, the story takes precedence over everything, and there won't be much time for Trek's typical optimism, idle theorizing, or office companionship. We can't deny that the strategy that they're using this time around is plausible. We're sure that with this format, the creators can more easily project their ideas on screen, giving us fans a better, more fulfilling, and thrilling experience. Thirdly, the cliffhanger and what's next. Strange New World's first season came to an abrupt end. Una Chin Riley, the first officer of the Enterprise, acknowledges that she lied about her species. She is actually a genetically modified Illyrian, and in the Star Trek universe, genetic modifications are forbidden. At the time of her last check-in, Commander Chin Riley had been detained by Starfleet after admitting to lying on her applications. The cliffhanger will need to be resolved resolved in the upcoming season of the show. However, because the show is episodic, the step up can actually pay off in just one episode. Furthermore, Captain Pike's fate is known. In the season's closing episode, it appears that Pike's concerns regarding his future were addressed and sort of brought to a satisfying conclusion. On the show, dangling story strands are rapidly resolved. Myers was much less interested in dissecting specific arcs than he was in amplifying the show's strengths. He seemed to enjoy the lightness and frequent humor of the show. It it appears that he wants to emphasize this in the forthcoming season. Myers is delivering the key components of an outstanding presentation in the purest theatrical sense. Laughter, tears, curtain call. We believe in how Myers will be staying true to the show's element. Deliver a season that'll blow our minds and make us feel emotions we never thought we'd feel, and move us in ways we'd never imagined. Lastly, what's the future of the characters? Anson Mount revealed in an exclusive interview with Esquire how Pike will change in season two now that he has met an older version of himself and has come to terms with his fate. He claims that since the first season's finale, Pike has become more determined. If the body swap episode from season one was one of your favorites involving everyone's favorite Vulcan science officer, Officer, get ready for more. According to Peck, Spock gets to truly start exploring his human side, which results in lots of hilarious antics. Spock's joyful exploration of his human nature will undoubtedly have an impact on his relationships. We'll continue to see that, and it's unquestionable.
unquestionably a step in his transformation into the person he is now. In order to be the Spock that Leonard Nimoy plays in the original series, he needs to have a deeper understanding of who he is as a person. A darker aspect of his character, especially his difficult relationship with the Klingons, will be explored in Season 2. According to Alusan Moken, who also affirmed his future with the project, the fate of new members like Erica Ortegas and Khan Noonien Singh is less definite than that of canon guaranteed characters, but both have declared their intention to return. Along with our old favorites, we'll also be getting a few brand new characters who we can't wait to get to know. Moving on to some other related news. Firstly, Star Trek Defiant by Chris Cantwell and Angel Enzueta expands the continuity of the Trek comics. IDW said earlier this year that they were committed to creating a vast, approachable Star Trek world of comic book continuity, and later this month will launch a brand new regular series titled Star Trek, with the March 2023 release of Star Trek Defiant, an ongoing story that sees fan favorite Worf gathering a hand-picked team to fight a galactic menace. IDW proudly foresees the first expansion of that project, the dark and edgy Star Trek Defiant series, which has been compared to The Dirty Dozen and Star Trek is written and illustrated by two prominent comic book creators, Chris Cantwell, who wrote Iron Man, Namor, and Star Wars Obi-Wan, and Angel and Zueta, who worked on Poe Dameron, The Flash. Fans and retailers may enjoy a variety of variant covers for Star Trek Defiant No. 1 when it debuts in March. These covers are from series artists Angel and Zueta, Malachi Ward, Declan Shalvey, David Anja, and Daniel Warren Johnson. This sounds extremely fascinating, and we can't wait to see where this project goes. We wish the creators the best of luck with their ambitious project. Next, concerns over t eyebrows in Star Trek Enterprise were really severe. As opposed to how Jolene Blaylock had been handled in Star Trek The Original Series and Star Trek Voyager, the creators of Star Trek Enterprise didn't treat her like a regular Vulcan. Blaylock was dressed in an attractive, form-fitting catsuit because she was the show's lead female, and the makeup artist did little to enhance her brows to make her appear like the alien she played because the show's producers believed it would diminish her appeal to men. But the difference was apparent to the audience, and a lot of them didn't like it. One fan in particular felt the need to express her thoughts, so on June 4, 2002, she penned a letter to Rick Berman and Brandon Braga. Miss Rhonda E. Green explained to the producers that she was not pleased with T. Paul's eyebrows, and that she had written the letter after reading in a magazine article that Berman and Braga had decided not to modify Blaylock's eyebrows. Many of us had a problem with her lack of Vulcan qualities, and that's definitely a point that added to the downfall of the show. Moving on to the last one, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4 scripts are already being written by writers. Creator of Star Trek Lower Decks Mike McMahon recently disclosed that Season 4 scripts are already being written for the adult animated series. The fourth season of Star Trek Lower Deck was a topic of discussion. During McMahon's discussion with The Hollywood Reporter, he revealed that even though Season 3's eight-episode run hasn't yet ended. Scripts are now being written as part of a larger announcement about the renewal of the platform's extensive lineup of Star Trek-related programming. Paramount Plus said in January 2022 that Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4 had been given the go-ahead. In 2023, Star Trek Strange New Worlds will also feature characters from Star Trek Lower Decks, making it the first time these characters will be seen in live action. This sounds extremely promising. We hope that they deliver as well. That's a wrap for this video. Are you excited about the upcoming season? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.